The Tennessee game was an example of what North Carolina could be at its best. It's a ceiling game. This is what their potential is. And boy, is it high. Multiple draft picks on this team. It looks like more talent than we've seen since. Cam Johnson, Kobe White, Luke May were on that 2019 squad that got a number one overall seed. That's what this team can be when everything is clicking, when it's all gelling. But as we know, it can be difficult with 18, 19, 20, 21 year olds managing success. How do you handle it when you're facing a team fresh off losing at the buzzer at home to a meh Georgia team and they don't have a number next to their name? Well, that's what we saw today in North Carolina's opener against Florida State, their ACC opener, I should say. The Tar Heels didn't look great. They had a stretch in which they missed 11 straight three-pointers and they were down by as many as 14 points in the second half. But unlike Tar Heel teams we've seen the last few years, this team didn't wither. This team didn't, you know, collapse down the stretch at home. They found a way to bounce back and they found a way to win a basketball game. And that's not something that you should take lightly. Ask the folks at Duke today when the Blue Devils erased their lead at Georgia Tech, Mark Mitchell with a couple of dunks, and then they still end up losing that game against Georgia Tech. Duke, a young team trying to figure things out probably right not to overreact after back-to-back -back road losses. Uh, let's not forget, Duke lost its first two road games last year and they turned out to be just fine. But keeping it with the Tar Heels, they figured out a way. And the way they figured out a way was with something we don't see that often. Full court pressure from the Tar Heels? They call it their diamond defense. They practice it every day. That's what Seth Trimble was telling us. And Seth also mentioned, who was plus 24 today, by the way, an excellent defender, Hubert Davis in the second half when they were down 14, he was laying into them. He was yelling, defend, play hard. And they decided to go to that full court pressure. And Hubert said, it's the first time that we use this outside of a dead ball situation. After makes, after misses, we leaned. We're really the first time on the full court pressure. And it worked. Florida State didn't know really what to do with it. Turnover after turnover, and it culminated in that 21 nothing run that really put the game away from North Carolina being down by eight points to suddenly leading by 13, 14 points in the game. And it was a wrap at that point. FSU, they did make it seven or six points, a six point deficit late in the game, but really North Carolina was gonna win it after that run they had. The dagger shot fittingly coming from RJ Davis who hit one deep on that left wing. Three straight games for 20, with 27 points for R.J. Davis, something that hasn't happened since Forte in the early 2000s, over 20 years. And if you're looking for a reason for why that might be, the answer is what Hubert did in the portal. Hubert, when I asked him about it after the game, said that everybody's getting better looks after the emphasis that they put on finding playmaking in the portal, the ability to pass the ball, and the ability to shoot the ball. With respect to Leaky Black and to Caleb Love, Caleb was often a black hole where the ball went in but never really spread out and went back around to other players on the floor. And Leakey wasn't really much of a shooting threat when he was out there, even though he was an excellent defensive player, as we know. Everybody on the floor for North Carolina right now can either shoot it or play make, and that makes it really hard to defend them. And RJ mentioned afterwards that it's given him a lot more catch and shoot threes than he had his first three seasons with the Tar Heels. It is a North Carolina win. That's what's most important. They start their ACC slate 1-0. And coming up next, a top five team with UConn, who just last night nearly won in Allen Fieldhouse. The defending champs will be waiting for the Tar Heels at Madison Square Garden right in their backyard. But of course, North Carolina, a lot of great history and ties to New York City, including their head coach, who of course played for the Knicks at one point in Huber Davis. So. That's what's next for the Tar Heels. It's amid this stretch where they're playing seven straight high major opponents after UConn. It'll be Kentucky. It'll be in Charlotte against Oklahoma, who was ranked in the most recent top 25 on Monday. They're ranked 25th in the country. North Carolina's responding well to perhaps its most difficult stretch of the season. And that is enough reason for Tar Heel fans to be very excited about what's possible for this team once ACC play really hits in the month of January when the calendar flips. Plenty for us to react to on Monday's show, and we hope you tune in 3 to 6 p.m. on The Drive on WSJS.